When the Fed starts cutting, actually, is when the markets start going lower. So just be aware that if the stock market does roll over 10, 15, 20%, we're likely headed to 50 and maybe... Hello everyone, Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist of Verified Investing, updates his outlook for NVIDIA, tech stocks, the economy, the dollar, Bitcoin, and gold. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Data from Cointelegraph Markets Pro and TradingView showed BTC price action attempting to cement gains, which accompanied the monthly close. Despite an overall failure to tackle key resistance levels above $64,000, Bitcoin traders had renewed cause for optimism as July got underway. Bitcoin has resumed its uptrend. Popular trader and analyst Rekt Capital summarized in one of several news posts on X. What are some of the major data releases you're looking forward to this week? Yeah, so number one is tomorrow morning, Tuesday morning at eight at 9.30 a.m., Jerome Powell speaks. That's going to be looked at as a cue for what these job numbers are going to tell us. He probably already has the jobs numbers. Is he going to be hawkish? Is he going to be a little dovish? That speech will be a big deal. And then what, I'm, what the, the next report that I'm looking for is 10 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday. That's the JOLTS numbers, job openings data. And that number will be very important. We've seen it really start to come in precipitously here down to, I think, about 8 million job openings from 12 million million in 2022. Now, historically, that's still above where we were in 2007 before the financial crisis. But if if the number comes below 8 million, you now start to get into a reasonable longer term zone where then you can start to say, OK, it's not that easy for people to find jobs. And by the way, just some on the ground analysis. I've talked to people. I, I have people that I've been talking to that are looking for jobs and they said they, they've applied at least here in Florida to literally 20, 30, 40, 50 jobs. And they're not even getting callbacks. So things are slowing here. There's no doubt about it. What about the last month? It Apparently the economy added something like 272,000 jobs, yeah. uh, more than expected. However, at the same time, the unemployment rate also ticked up. Uh, what's your read on the economy adding more jobs, but also uh, more people getting laid off or losing their jobs or just leaving the labor force, thus adding to the unemployment rate at the same time? Yeah, so I would I would encourage people to start looking into the underlying what jobs are being added because I think they're they're lower income and they're part time. And so this is something that the media is not talking about out there. You're you're awesome enough to kind of bring it to the forefront and let me express it to people. But if you look at the government, the government continues to hire. That's been one of the major driving forces for the economy in terms of adding jobs. And then if you look at full time work versus part time work, part time work has been going sky high in terms of adding jobs, but full time jobs are actually in decline. And so these are all precursors. If you look at any of the past, you know, recession periods, this is all a precursor to a recession, to a big slowdown. And I think Jerome Powell is very aware of that, but he can't give an inch right now because you have a scenario where the stock market's at all time highs and inflation is still north of 3%. So he has to toe the line. He has to play it the hardball way. Um, but ultimately, they're very aware that things are slowing very quickly. They just can't say the pivot very quickly here. And by the way, I even worry about deflation. I even think I was in the camp for the longest time that we'd come down to 3% and kind of hold it there. But I actually think that we're in a position now where we could actually be seeing deflation. And you can only go as far as, I mean, just go simply as far as looking at some of these charts. I don't know if you've looked at like the wheat chart recently or the nickel chart, but some of these charts are just downright scary. Let me bring up the nickel chart for you guys. The decline on nickel just in the last six weeks, 21%. If we look at other things, I mean, oil's holding up, but I heard there was a lot of shorts on the institutional side that are covering. So I think that's part of it. But then if we go to the wheat chart, I mean, these charts have just come crashing down. And I do worry that we're actually in for a deflationary period starting not until probably 2025. But if you take the stock market down 20 percent plus these commodities, I think you're looking at deflation. You know, I've heard a lot of uh, people tell me that, well, the U.S. debt level was rising. The deficit level is projected to also increase per the Congressional Budget Office, CBO, and thus the inflation rate will eventually pick back up at some point in the future. Uh, this is more of a longer term trend. I just like you to evaluate this and see if you agree or disagree with the notion that just because we have a lot of debt, inflation will not go away. 
No, yeah. So so this is the kicker. This is how I see it, is that you do have pockets of deflation. My biggest concern, and this is something that I'm literally it keeps me up at night thinking about, is that you have a government that doesn't know how to rein in spending and you have a Federal Reserve that every crisis looks for a reason why they can drop interest rates dramatically to stimulate the, the, the economy and also adds literally trillions of dollars to their balance sheet. And so any sort of deflation is going to give the green light, unfortunately, to these entities to just go back printing, printing, printing. And this is how you get to the max pain level where the debt of the U.S. literally will cause a major, you know, even potentially hyperinflation scenario in the future. Now I'm gaming this out. This is my job, right? Is I'm a trader. I look at what's happening today, but I also look at how it's happening next month, next year, next decade. And I do worry that if we do see disfla- d- dis- or in deflation, it's yeah. going to be the trigger for all of these entities to say, oh, look, we have deflation. Let's just print more money. And that ultimately makes our bed that we're going to have to lay in down the line. I'm actually heavily short the markets right now. I do have some longs out there because I think you have to stay diversified. I, I actually am loving uh, Baidu right now as a long trade. Now, granted, it's a China name, so you got to be a little bit on the careful side. But if we look at this chart, it's been pounded down. I mean, this is basically the Google of China from what I know, and it's trading at almost 52-week multi-year lows down here, and it just tagged this nice little level of support down here. So so I think there are pockets. I, I still like the Brazil markets. It's correct decently down. I think you have a lot of black swan potential. The dollar yen is one of the biggest ones, David. So I don't know if you've covered this in depth, but look at the dollar yen just broke out above the previous high right here. This is where the Japanese Central Bank intervened. So they intervened and pushed it down. Then the U.S. comes out and says, hey, they're potentially going to be labeled a currency manipulator because the U.S. doesn't want to do this. And just for your viewers, Everyone needs to understand that the reason why the U.S. doesn't want Japan to intervene in the currency markets is because to intervene and strengthen the yen, they have to dump dollars on the open market and they have to dump U.S. debt. They're the biggest holder of U.S. debt. If you have more U.S. debt on the open market, it pushes interest rates up and that can work against the Federal Reserve in the future. So either way, it looks like they might have to intervene again, though, if it continues up like this. I'm happy you brought up the yen. Let's keep that screen up there. I heard uh, somebody told me last week the fair value should be 140. Uh, just take a look at the charts. Is that possible? Or oh, is it that certainly is. It's, it certainly is at some point, but certainly, I mean, right now the trend is definitely strong here. You've broken above, so you have a breakout above the previous high. I have a target for my intervention uh, where I do think that they'll be forced to intervene. See the high end of the channel right up here. So if we look. Every time it hits here, you get a big sell-off. Right here, you got the intervention. So I think if you get up to this level here, which is right around 163 and change, I think the Japanese Central Bank will be forced to intervene. And then it'll be interesting to watch how that is a kind of how does the U.S. react to that intervention because they basically warned Japan not to do it. And then, by the way, not to mention other geopolitical issues, but what's going on in France, we've seen the CAC actually have a breakdown here. I'm going to bring up the CAC chart. And by the way, I don't look at, you know, other markets that often, you know, yeah, yeah China and stuff like that. But there, look at the rollover from this this high here on the CAC. The CAC is down significantly, basically 10% off of its highs. And the DAX, which is arguably the more important market in Germany, actually broke a wedge pattern as making a bear flag. So that implies further downside to come in in um, in Europe, in the European Union here. So, so there's a lot of things that are hanging out there, including Taiwan, Russia, posing up to... to to uh, China and then to North Korea. But um, people continue to say, just buy the market. And that's been working up until now. I just do caution people that this was the mentality in previous scenarios before big declines. Let's talk about uh, Bitcoin now. Uh, Bitcoin has, um, uh, it's just been range bound ever since it broke above $74,000 not too long ago. And then uh, now it's at 62. So it's between 62 and 70,000. This range has been going on for a couple months now. Uh, Is it going to break out anytime soon, do you think? So I still expect a little bit more weakness, um, but I am a mid to long term bull. I think, again, the more I see what's going on with the government and the kind of catastrophic spending that has shows literally no side wants to get control of it at this point. Um, and then you look at what the Fed is about to do in terms of lowering interest rates. I do think eventually more and more people adopt the idea that Bitcoin is that digital source of safety. Now, it's not right now, but one of the positives about Bitcoin is that the volatility has gone down dramatically. Now, if you're a investor who likes seeing 30 percent moves in a week, you're not so happy. But if you're someone who looks for a asset like gold, but maybe in digital form, I do think this brings up a great opportunity for a kind of a longer term play. Now, again, my only concern here 
is that we clearly see the stock market have still an influence on Bitcoin, meaning that if we still see this correction that I do see coming in the stock market, then Bitcoin probably goes down, at least in the short term. Um, I do have a big level at 50,000 right here. This is the former um, spot ETF approval high, major technical support, down sloping trend line kind of right here. So I think I would start accumulating there. But I have to also be fully aware that if we do get into a full-fledged recession and the Fed does cut rates. Now, by the way, just to interject here, everyone says, oh, when the Fed cuts rates, the markets will go higher. Actually, historically, it's the opposite. When the Fed starts cutting, actually, is when the markets start going lower. So just be aware that if the stock market does roll over 10, 15, 20 percent, we're likely headed to 50 and maybe even down lower than that. So the basics, the basics, just to summarize. I'm a buyer on weakness of Bitcoin because I'm a long term bull, but I do expect it to get weaker and give me those buying opportunities. If the Fed cuts rates into a weak economy, that could be bearish for the uh, for, for the stock markets. But right. uh, let's assume, let's just for the sake of argument, assume there's a soft landing and nothing happens and they still cut rates. Would that still be bad for stocks? So so my guess is if we have a soft landing, there's the only thing you get is one or two cuts and the market okay. will eventually not like that per valuation metrics. I mean, I think the market's already factoring ex excessive cuts at this point. Um, and also, again, I would just bring up the former data we looked at in terms of delinquencies, in terms of, of um, hardship loans from 401ks or borrowing from 401ks is that it, to me, it clearly shows that probably the one thing keeping the economy afloat right now is the stock market. And I do worry that once that has any sort of even a 10% correction, I think a lot of people would pull back on their spending that have exposure to the stock market because they get worried. Uh, in terms of timing, then, uh, are you tactically long for now? Like, would you stay, let's say, riding the momentum for now until you see even more signs the economy is turning south? So for me, I, I, I'm a leader in terms of I want to get in front of a move. So I've already shorted okay. the NASDAQ. I, like I said, I do have some longs, a little Baidu, a little Zoom, a little, you know, there are pockets where I want to be diversified and have some long exposure. But I do want to just mention here, this is the chart of the NASDAQ 100. And look right. at this, look at this channel. This is, this is, this is again, just like we're looking at, remember, we we're just looking at a chart of the dollar yen had a channel. Channels are really powerful and they're not used in technical analysis often, but they work. And here's the low from 2020 connected to the low of the recession in or the, the the bear market in 2022. And if we stretch a parallel up to this high, the high from the bull market of 2021, we actually just tagged this high here. And to me, that would insinuate some sort of drop. Now, is it a small drop of three to 5%? We don't know, but ultimately I would expect a pullback here. And in addition, the daily chart put in a topping tail last Friday. Topping tails are bearish reversal signals. So it's another signal that could tell us we're on the verge of a pullback. Last thing I'll mention, David, is that the last time we corrected here, this, this little correction going back to April, it was when, and this is kind of wild, it was when we saw a, a blackout period for companies just ahead of earnings where they couldn't buy their own stock back. And so here we are, literally, we just entered a period now where we're in this blackout period. About 50 plus percent of the S&P is now in a blackout period. They can't do share buybacks. And again, yeah. notice the, the coordination here. When companies don't buy their stock back, the stock market doesn't do so well. And it's another reason we could see a few, at least a three to 5% correction. Then we'll have to see if it expands into more. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Gareth Soloway. If you enjoy this highlight video, Please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.